this episode, we enter the realm of Lycra and Capes with an interview with the creators of the new superhero rules for Mithras. Welcome to the Mithras Matters podcast, season one, episode six, Superpowers and Fluttering Capes. Welcome to Mithras Matters, a podcast dedicated to the Mithras rule set and all its supplements. As always, I'm your host, Inwills, and I've decided to dedicate this episode of the podcast to a supplement which is currently being created and play tested. You might have already guessed what I'm referring to, but if you haven't already from the intro and the title of the podcast, then I'll tell you now. It is all about superheroes. Although I haven't got a collection of comics or action figures, I have always been a great fan of the superhero genre. From the X-Men and Spider-Man and his amazing friends cartoons on a Saturday morning television, through Golden Heroes, the RPG, to online MMOs like DC Heroes and Champions Online. I was first introduced to the superhero setting for Mithras by playing the published adventure Agony and Ecstasy. If you haven't played it, then I will be doing a review of it in the next podcast. I pl enjoy playing that so much that I was super hyped to hear that a full rule set was being prepared for the superhero genre. But before we hear the interview, I just wanted to say thank you to all the guests who have taken the time to be interviewed for the podcast and everyone who has contributed segments. This podcast would not happen without everyone's contributions. And if you would like to contribute to the podcast, then just drop me an email or message and let me know what you would like to cover. You can email me on inwills at gmail.com or send me a message on the various forums I frequent. Okay, without further ado, let's take off our glasses and rip open our shirts or turn around quickly or just don a fully powered suit of armor. It's time for the interview all about superheroes. I'm joined today by Brian and Mike. So to start off with, tell me something about yourselves. What, what is it that you do? Um, Brian, you go first, because otherwise there might be a bit of a competition. To, so <laughs> so you, yeah, Brian, off you go. What, what do you do? Uh, so I am the managing editor at uh, The Design Mechanism. Uh, I've been working as an editor with them for about four years. Um, I started way back with the, the ill-fated Adventures in Glorantha. I, that was one of the first gigs that I had with, with Laws and Pete. And uh, I've just basically edited a lot with them since, you know, most of the, like the Mythic Earth, Earth series, uh, Vampire Wars, and, and Agony and Ecstasy. And, you know, it's, I'm just a huge fan of the D100 series. I've been playing it since, you know, the late 70s, early 80s. And, you know, haven't really looked back. I mean, I, I do play other games, but Mithras is really where my heart and soul is. That's fantastic. And what about you, Mike? Um, my name is Mike uh, Laramore. I am a, I wrote Agony and Ecstasy for Design Mechanism. I also just recently uh, wrote a book called um, Elevation for the sister game M Space. Um, I just kind of fell into this. I actually um, have been playing D100 and specifically actually Super World it was one of my first D100 game back when it first came out and I kind of fell into RuneQuest 6 slash Mithras while looking for another system and haven't really turned back since so fantastic i have to say that i've actually bought m space it's just behind me on my shelf i haven't read it yet but um i don't know if you know mr pickles who plays bartleby fumers yeah. in our campaign he's a real sci-fi lover and we're dying to sort of like get get into that as well so 
we've played um, Agony and Ecstasy, which is a, a superhero game. I think that's what we would call it. So why superheroes? What you know, why are you interested in superheroes and supervillains? Um, I think it's kind of part of my DNA. Um, I, I have to say mine started actually when I was a child and they used to show reruns of the old Adam West Batman show. Uh, and that kind of set me down the road. Um, and like I said, you know, with Superworld, uh, superheroes were kind of part of my role-playing DNA as well. Um, it was one of the first games I actually played. Uh, and over the years, it's always been a genre I've come back to. Um, I think it's just kind of that, you know, role-playing games in general are wish fulfillment. You know, we want to be the heroes. We want to be someone spectacular. We want to have special powers and abilities beyond what we can in the real world. And to me, you know, superheroes are kind of the ultimate representation of that, you know, that we have that opportunity, you know, to go out and save people and, and do spectacular things. Save the world. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. But what about you, Brian? Have you always been a lover of superheroes? Yeah, I'd say that, you know, actually, Mike and I have a lot in common regarding that as well. You know, I when I was a little kid, the, the 60s Batman show was on on and reruns. And uh, it, was, it was something that I kind of fell in love with. And, you know, I've always, always wanted to play a superhero game. But it seems like most of the groups that I've been involved in have just been fantasy-oriented. So... My, myself and Mike actually working on this, I've had, I've had the chance to play, you know, an actual superhero game, and it is it is a ton of fun. It really is. So, but yeah, I mean, I've I've loved superheroes ever since I was a little kid. Like I think most most people have, you know. Um, and now with like the explosion of the media uh, around superheroes, I think that you know it's it's a it's a little bit more. There's a lot more interest in it in uh, in actually playing a superhero. So, so do, do we have a title for this? Is it called the supers or superheroes or a working title at the moment? We do have a working title. Um, it was actually suggested by Mike's wife, if I'm not uh, incorrect there. Um, it is called Destined at this point. Um, yeah, it is a working title. So yeah, we, we're, we're still trying to hammer that down. But uh, yeah, I, I like the idea around that. I'll, I'll let Mike speak to a little bit around that because that was his wife's idea. Yeah, it was actually something we were having lunch a few weeks ago. And my wife said, you know, we were talking about different aspects of superheroes and talking about different ways, you know, to kind of look at them and view. It. And we were talking about kind of the destiny aspect of it, that, you know, you're kind of faded. You know, a lot of superheroes, if you look at their backgrounds, you know, specific things fell into place to kind of put them where they are and put them in the position. You know, Spider-Man's a great example of that, you know, with great power comes great responsibility. The events that led to him becoming a hero and not just exploiting his powers. And, and that's kind of what got that, you know, ball rolling. And she suggested it. I thought, you know, we'd, we'd really been kind of, you know, racking our brains trying to come up with at least, you know, we, we, I think we had a, a huge list of titles between Brian and I as far as, you know, suggestions and different things along the way. And that one just kind of clicked. And, you know, and right now it's the working title, but, you know, it's, it, I think it covers a lot of aspects of the genre very well. Yeah. So th this is basically going to be um, the Mithras rule set or uh, based on the D, um, the percentile dice um, with superheroes and super villains. So what's the sort of um, feel that you're going for with the game? You know, what sort of heroes do you think people would be able to create with the rule set? Um, our goal is actually to be able to create nearly any hero you want. Um, I find, you know, if, if I think if we all explore that, you know, if, if you're a fan of comic books, you know, everybody has their favorite heroes and everybody has their favorite villains and everybody likes their certain kind of stories or different eras of comic books. And we're really trying to kind of touch upon as much of that as we can uh, so people can really play the game that they want to play and play the heroes that they want to play. Um, I think that's kind of really what you need in a superheroes game. I don't, we, but also with that, you know, Mithras feel which is kind of what brought me to this originally and, and Brian too, is the idea that we felt that Mithras really had the right feel, the combat, the way the system works to really support a really good superheroes game. And, you know, Agony Next was kind of the test for that to see how it would really play out 
with the system. Do you think super villains will be in there as well? Is that an option? I, I tend to be a villain. <laughs> I, I'm always, you know, cheering for the villains in these situations. I think it's because I'm always the GM and I get to play them. But I just wondered, where, will it have the flexibility to, you know, be able to run a villain type game? I with think it? that the flexibility is definitely there. Um, you know, I the the play testing that we have done, at least in my group, they have played primarily superheroes. Um, but given you know the the unique flexibility in in the destined rules so far, I think there's there's definitely the opportunity mm. for you know creating a villain type character, and maybe the NPCs are the heroes who are trying to stop the villain. Um, and I'm I'm actually a lot like you, Ian. I GM far more than I play. So, you know, yes. I, I'm, I'm always kind of rooting for the trolls and, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it were one thing, because I, I obviously I've had a, a sneaky peek at it. And the, can you tell us something about the, the different levels of the game? I, I really like that. Um, about the actual campaign. Yeah, work. so when we initially were approached by Laws to do this, uh, you know, he said that he wanted to basically scale it so that at the highest end of the actual published book, we would have something along the lines of uh, Spider Man, uh, for example. So we wouldn't be going as high as Superman or Galactus or anything like that, where it's just like, you know, Earth destroying, you know, time altering. Uh, craziness, although, you know, the opportunity is there to do that in the future. So, uh, you know, I'll, I'll let Mike kind of speak to the uh, to the main three levels, but we kind of had a, a top end to start with, which I think was exceptionally helpful in developing the book. Yeah, exactly. Um, we took inspiration from other books, like, you know, After the Vampire Wars, which already had power levels in it. And we kind of built upon that foundation to really kind of come up with ones which felt, which felt, right for superheroes and what we we have right now is we have street which is kind of your daredevil your punisher your vigilantes who may have a few powers if any but not really a lot uh, they kind of rely more on their own skills and abilities uh, we have epic which is basically a majority of superheroes i could i could say you know a large percent of the justice league the avengers people like that they have a the x-men they have a, a few superpowers or they concentrate on a few specific powers um, but they definitely have more options to play with and then we have the paragon level which is the powerhouses your spider-man um, your green lantern iron man people like that where you can kind of really simulate some heroes that have that much broader range of powers to play with uh, much more diverse abilities. Um, and like Brian said, you know, the goal here was not to create, you know, the epic God like superheroes, you know, Superman, you know, for example, you know, but I, I to me in, in playing superhero games over the years, you know, those characters aren't necessarily to me as interesting, you know, because the, the challenges, you know, you oftentimes the challenges they're fighting, you know, are, are on their scale or it's really not about challenging the hero toe to toe in fighting. It's about putting other things in danger and putting environments and people in danger to really threaten them. And that can be interesting too, but we want to kind of get people, you know, the opportunity to really mix it up, you know, and, you know, fight supervillains and do the kind of things that superheroes should do, but, you know, still feel mortal. Yeah, and I, and I think that's um, one of the aspects I really loved about the rules, this sort of like these different levels. And we're very much a, a street level group. You know, we, we like it down there. I don't think we'll ever sort of like get up to the top end, but it's fantastic that there's the flexibility to actually do that um, if we wanted to. We have played agony and ecstasy i don't know if you've seen us playing it or not but <laughs> we, we haven't finished it yet we sort of like use it as a, a um when some people can't make the mithras game we we go back to it and one of the things the players really loved was the the powers and the flexibility within those powers um in the sense that not everything was there and they had that there was that capacity to actually make the power them for themselves and how it would uh, interact, etc. So, how will the power system work 
in the, the final um, production. Um, it, it actually is built upon the power system that we use in Agony XC. And, and one of the goals um, when, you know, Laws first asked me about, you know, something I had posted on the board and we kind of had discussion about it in terms of designing a power system for Mithras is one of my primary goals was always superheroes should always feel super. You know, you should never feel like you have a finite pool of points to uh, that you have to spend to power your you know abilities. You should never feel like, you know, I really want to use my heat vision, but I failed my activation role because it just kind of takes you out of the genre. Um, and that was kind of the thing. So the power system is, is definitely based on what was there, but we've expanded it far beyond that. Um, the basic power system is there are core powers and that those are the powers that your hero always has available. So enhanced speed, uh, super strength, teleportation, uh, the different things you can do always. Um, it may require an action, it may require different things that you have to do to accomplish it, but the, your hero, you know, unless it's negated or you take limitations on that power, you always can do that thing. Um, it also includes, you know, some things that technically aren't powers, but, you know, we kind of lump them in there. Um, there's a power called combat expertise where you have uh, diverse combat abilities. So, you know, for your, your fighters, your Iron Fist, your Daredevil, your Batman, you know, it, you, you have a quote unquote power, but it's kind of representing your training and other things that make you superior to other people. Uh, then we have boosts, which are designed to enhance the core powers. Uh, and I, I viewed them always as tricks. Um, uh, you know, my example has always been the Flash. You know, Flash can run really fast, but sometimes he runs in a circle really fast to create a whirlwind to, you know, suck up villains, or sometimes he vibrates fast enough that he can pass through other objects. And those are kind of the tricks that he's learned using his base power, and that's what boosts represent. Uh, there are different ways to enhance it. Um, and sometimes even there's other powers kind of in there, like uh, telepathy, for example, has mind control. We kind of put them together. So you have to have telepathic ability and then you can control people's minds. And then there are limits, which not only limit the powers uh, to give them some restrictions and give them some things that maybe operate, they operate differently than normal, but we also included some limits that actually limit your hero as a whole. So if you're vulnerable to kryptonite, then that would be a limit. Or if you have a limitation, you know, that would affect your body or your, some other aspect of your whole character, then that's where that comes in as well. So we've tried to really make it diverse. Um, I'm not sure, Brian, how many powers? I think we're almost about 40 powers. Uh, that powers. sounds about right, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Because I, I was um, wondering whether or not, you know, um, so a lot of players might come wanting to um, design their favorite comic book hero, while others might want to come and sort of like think, oh, I want to make something completely new. So does the system have that flexibility that they can make existing um action heroes and all completely their own well uh you know in my group my my players just wanted to create entirely new characters they didn't want to base them off of any existing superheroes and i let them run with that because it's a play test and you know i wanted to just kind of test the flexibility and the uh the, the game mechanics as a whole um so my wife for example who is one of my players. Uh, she's originally from Argentina and she wanted to create uh, a character who was uh, like a, a protector essentially of the immigrants uh, within the, in the city in which we, you know, the, the game takes place. And she kind of based that very, very loosely off of a, a Puerto Rican uh, superhero called La Borinquena, who is a, like a, a character who fights for kids. Um, it's a very interesting character, you know, and, I, you know, this is, this is something that I actually really, really love about the, the genre as a whole is how the characters are usually supporters of the people who can't support themselves or people who can't, you know, defend themselves. You know, they are the defenders of the weak in, in traditional superhero genres. So, uh, you know, my, my players really just rolled with, let's just, let's pull some powers out, let's pull some boosts out, let's pull some limits and let's just see what happens. Um, and I think they they did a really excellent job with it. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I could say that we've done both in our playtests within my group. 
uh, one of my players actually has suggested this. He said, you know, the way to test the system to see how it works is we need to recreate some actual heroes and see how if they have the right feel. So the very first time when we had first come up, you know, when the first draft of the power system, um, they had made, I think, you know, a couple Marvel superheroes. And I had them fight Dr. Doom and, you know, had this plot for the adventure about it. And that was what we came away with. And that was kind of something that kind of made me feel good, you know, even at that stage as they recreated those heroes and they said they felt right. Um, you know, one one person played Spider-Man and he was doing everything a spider can. Um, it was basically, you know, worked out exactly as I'd hoped it had. But then the other thing is since then we've been doing their own individual heroes. Um, and the same thing goes. They have created unique heroes. Um, one character, or one player created a, a battle suit, uh, battle armor character. Uh, someone made a wizard. Um, someone made a, a, a street fighting hero with no real powers. And even at the same power level, they all worked. They all fought well together. Um, it, it's, yeah. And even just as, as a kind of a nod to my superhero gaming roots, um, we came up with a random power table. Um, back to the old uh, TSR Marvel superheroes game. Um, and actually the current thing we're doing is we're going to do that where they're just going to roll a random power and kind of build their characters from that uh, just to see how it goes. So I mean, we're, we're trying different things to see how flexible it is. And so far I have to say it's been working out. I think, I, I, I think Brian, if you could say this, I think you said you've had the same experience too. It's worked mm -hmm. out better than we could have hoped. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm 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 very proud of the way that, you know, this has really developed. I think that, you know, it is truly based on Mithras and it uses the core rules, but it has a superhero feel to it that I don't think uh, you know, I've I've really seen before by reading other other superhero books uh that are based on an existing uh, you know, uh, an existing rules system. I think that, you know, I'm I'm very proud of the the way this has turned out. Right. Well, I suddenly had an idea there. We should have tried to see how many superheroes um, um, phrases we could get into this. So, you know, like it's clobbering time or <laughs> right phrase. <laughs> and as I said, but we, we'll move on. So you've started to mention um, rules and I'm really interested about combat because one of the things I love about the Mithras rule set is the combat. I think it, it flows really nicely. It allows those players to really sort of like perfect their moves, etc. cetera. Um, so is it the same in the superhero game? Has it been alteration? How, how's that going to well, work? Well, I think just the, the very nature of powers and superheroes transforms the, the combat in a way, but it is based on the essential you know, Mithras system. So if you're familiar with the way that it, that it works, then it won't be that hard to kind of port over your, your ideas and your concepts into this. It's just that it's on a completely different level. Um, you know, there are special effects. There are different things that happen based off of, you know, a certain power that you may have. Again, even if that power is combat expertise, as Mike mentioned earlier, you know, that, that is going to affect your abilities as a, as a combat style character. Yeah. And we, we, you know, it was kind of a, a sense of if it isn't broke, don't fix it. You know, the reason, you know, we originally just had this discussion about uh, making a superheroes game is because we liked the, the core rules and there re really was that feeling. Um, and really, you know, there's a couple things I think we'll probably be adding to the system, but it's Mithras at its core. There's not really any major changes. Um, the combat works so well. And I think for a lot of us, I think it's what's drawn us to the system because it's such, you know, to me, what always I found appealing about Mithras in terms of combat was it tells a story too. You know, it, it, every attack, every defense, you know, every special effect, you know, it's part of that narrative. And, you know, what really kind of was appealing to myself and our group when we first started playing, um, you know, we, we working on rules as far as movement, because obviously superheroes, there's a lot of movement there. Um, we're working on uh, team-based tactics because that's a big part of the genre as well. Uh, we're working on different little tweaks and add-ons, but essentially, you know, the rules are the same. So if you know Mithras, you're going to know Destin as well. 
Fantastic. Well, one of the aspects I really liked about the Agony and Ecstasy module was that the players had to find things out and there there was a lot of um, investigation and social interaction and that actually sort of like worked um, who they knew, contacts, secret identities. Is that all going to be in the, the new um, super heroes sort of like rules is it something that's been worked yes. on um that is something actually that's very much a part of what we've been writing so far um we actually have a specific chapter about playing as a superhero um talking about you know the the challenges of battling secret you know or keeping your identity secret and balancing that with your normal life and you know how the world views superheroes which I think is a very important part of it too. You know, are you accepted? Are you pariahs? Are there, you have to worry about being chased by the police as well as the criminals, you know, all the things that can come along with that. Um, I think, you know, the investigation aspect is obviously very important and that's something we have, we're working on for the book as well. Um, I think, you know, just uh, anything we can add in terms of building that world, you know, and I think that's really what makes the most important is that you feel that setting you know, is a living setting and that the heroes are part of it. And even in terms of building their own legends within that setting. Um, and then we've also um, kind of taken, you know, cults and brotherhoods and we've kind of have our own version, which is organizations. You know, because, you know, that's, you know, your shield. That's your, you know, major organizations. That's, you know, companies, corporations, uh, you know, Superman's, you know, the Daily Planet, um, but also uh, superhero teams, which them in of themselves are their own organization, and that can be something that you know the players have their own opportunity to build their own team and develop their headquarters and all the things that go along with that as their careers as heroes, you know, continue. Sounds fantastic. Um, Agony and Ecstasy I've played and well we're playing and going along. Um, would this be compatible with the, the new rule set? Will people be able to use that module in the future as well? Uh, yes, actually um, as part of the play test, one of the things I did in terms of pre-generated characters um, and we were kind of working on stuff to have available for a play test for it was to recreate all of the Agony and Ecstasy uh, heroes with the new rules. Um, so they've been kind of in there and the actual setting which we're planning on including is based on the setting which we used in Agnesi so we're kind of expanding upon that as well so you know it's very much something where you could start with that module and then go into you know your own campaign or develop that further and you know that can be a good jumping point for that Uh, so yeah we definitely want to keep that part of you know because it was you know kind of the foundation of where this came from so it's something that you know we like to keep as part of it too and and right. One thing that we, we definitely wanted to include in Destin was the, the, the cop alerts that were in Agony and Exodus. And we've, you know, greatly created a lot, a lot more of those, uh, you know, that, that kind of expand out based on the new rule set. And uh, there are, you know, opportunities to use, as, as Mike said, the same uh, characters from Agony and Ecstasy. Um, and we've, adapted those to to match the new rule set um and you know gemini city has been transformed a little bit uh but i think for the better you know we we've kind of made it um we've made it a, a lot more expansive I, I guess you could say there's a lot more information about you know the the setting itself and uh like as an example in my game i actually took uh gemini city which we're now calling gemelo city uh, which is the the Spanish term uh, for for twin, uh, gemelos is their city. But um, and I transformed it into a place where there were no superheroes. Like no one had superpowers except for my two players that I'm currently you know playtesting with. So they really get to they they get the chance to sort of expand out on that and explore the city and make it their own their own superhero place. So again, it's the, it's the flexibility. Yeah. Yeah. And- and oddly enough, you know, in terms of some of the coppelers and things we've we've included there, if it makes it into the final book, um, some of the unanswered questions in Agony and Ecstasy are actually, you know, without going into any spoilers, you know, kind of answered or, you know, expanded upon in the actual setting material. So, 
Fantastic. Um, before we bring it all to a, a close, the interview, I, I always like to put some fun questions uh, in if you've listened to any of the, the past interviews we've had. So um, I focus these fun questions on superheroes and supervillains. So first one, you know, who is your favorite super? Who, who is the person you can for go you? First, Mike. Okay. Um, I, I have a, a license plate for Batman on my car. I have about 90% of my no. shirts for Batman. So <laughs> I, I guess that one's a pretty easy one to answer. So I, Fantastic. So your license plate is Yes. My, my parents got that for me for Christmas a few years ago. And, you know, I, I always admire Batman because, you know, the idea behind Batman is, you know, <clears throat> anybody can become a hero, you know, as long as you have. 10 years to train abroad and limitless money and resources, then yes, you too can become Batman. That's uh, that's interesting. My, my favorite superhero is probably Rorschach, which I think is an analog to Batman. And I think it's just because it's, it's sort of like the dark side. Like if Batman was in, in a real gritty world, like a real, uh, I love the world that Watchmen has, um, I don't. I don't like. I wouldn't want to play in that world. But I, I really love the book, and I love the, you know, the the character of Rorschach because he is, he is just sort of a, a self made man who, he's he's not the he's not a hero really, but he is, I think, far more interesting than let's say Doctor Manhattan in uh, The Watchmen. So yeah, he would he would probably be my favorite super just because of the complexity of the character itself. Brilliant. And what about? superpowers what what would you like what would you want what would be that one superpower i think i'd like to fly you know flying dreams are always exciting so i think that would be that would be really great that's a that's a tough one um i actually think the way my normal day goes between work and family and obligations i'm gonna say duplication because there are lots of days I'd like to have about five or six more of me just to feel like I could get everything done. Can I, can I switch now or? <laughs> that, that is the best superpower I've ever heard of. Would you go hero or villain? For me, I would go villain. There is no shadow of a doubt. <laughs> What about you guys? I think I was raised on, uh, you know, Mister Rogers. So I think I would, I would probably be try to be a hero. You know, I think it's it's a difficult thing to do in in any era, and the modern era I think is is even more difficult. But I think I'd try to be a hero. Yeah, I think the same. But I think I'd like to have the costume of a villain because I think they always dress better. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they, they most definitely do, I think. So and you, I must say at this point that you've had some time to think about this one because I'm looking forward to what would be your superhero quote of the day? What, what would be that um, it's clobbering time and things like that? What, what, would you, what did you come up with? Um, I really racked my brain about this, but I think I'm going to go to the comic The Tick and his sidekick Arthur. And I think my catchphrase is going to be not in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> well, you know, I, I really couldn't come up with a good one. I think that, you know, mine would probably be just like, let's get this edited. That's, uh, that's, <laughs> that's pretty much my day to day. Not only my, my, my work with uh, the design mechanism, but also my, my day job. So, yeah. Right. So this is getting edited. Fantastic. Okay, then. So um, do we have a release date um, for these fantastic set of rules and any final comments that you would like to say well, to the listeners? Uh, we, we turned in the first draft of this to Laws and Pete, and we've gotten yep. some feedback. So we are actually making those changes now. And as I, I heard from uh, your, your previous uh, interview, you know, that, that is a long process. And, and being on this end of it rather than the editorial end, I, I do see how much work it really is. Um, I think that we're, we're aiming for 2020. Uh, yeah. You know, it just depends on the number of, of revisions. Um, and, and as myself kind of being the project manager on this, on this uh, development of this book, I am going to try to do as much editorial as I can before we actually hand it over to another editor, um, you know, so that it's much easier on that person to just get through it and 
mm. you know, then we can get it published. But, you know, unless Mike knows any different, that's kind of what I've. Nope. Um, that, that's my hope too. Um, yeah. I think, you know, the other thing too is, you know, we've been doing a lot between our, our you know, our personal groups, but, you know, I, I feel, you know, a little more play testing too is good too, because we want to get it as polished as we can and, you know, make sure it has that right feel. I agree. Mm. And I, and I think it will be absolutely fantastic. Uh, I'm, I, for one, and my players are so looking forward to getting our hands on it and actually, you know, starting to do some, um, actual live streaming of it to um to be involved with it it's been absolutely fantastic so thank yeah, you for doing that i, I very yeah. much enjoyed your agony <laughs> ecstasy so yeah yeah, uh, yeah. brilliant thank you very much so thank you for spending um taking up the time to come and talk to the podcast i really do appreciate it thank you thank for having you. us Thank you to both Mike and Brian for taking the time out of their busy schedules to record that interview with me. And if that has whet your appetite for some lycra and cloak wearing, then you can go and enjoy the module Agony and Ecstasy straight away. I'll do a complete review of it next month, but for now it's enough to say that you get everything you need to run the adventure, including some pre-generated characters. You can pick up the module from Eon Game Games for $5.99, which includes a free PDF of the module, or from the Design Mechanism store for $10.99. So if you do go and play it then, or you've already played it, then do let me know what you thought. Before you all leave, yes, fingers away from that stop button, I just wanted to do a slight bit of self-promotion, so don't turn me off quite yet. You can catch up with the rest of my content by searching Inwills on the internet. And if you are new to Mithras, then don't forget to check out my rules videos on YouTube, as well as our actual play sessions. You can catch us live every Saturday at 1900 hours BST on, on Twitch, or just go to my YouTube channel. The links are in the show notes below. Thank you for all your support. I really do appreciate it. And if you would like to go one step further, then the link to my Patreon page is in the show notes as well. If you become a patron, you not only get to see some bloopers from my YouTube content, but there are also my adventure notes and reflections available to my Patreons. In November's podcast, I'm going to be reviewing the modules White Death and Agony and Ecstasy, and Loz will be returning in order to share some of his wisdom with us. Have a great month of gaming, and I will chat again in November. And until next month, let's hope all our post roles succeed and provide us with a well-deserved special. Thanks for listening, everybody. See ya! this podcast is covered by the Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license. So please give appropriate credit if you are sharing or copying any part of this podcast. Thank you.